Hey everybody and welcome back to the Art Corner. Today we are going to do kind of a guy picture. This is Stonehenge in England. And I'm going to try to stay on this England path a little bit if I can. I just got back in May and my producer here, Brennan, went to see this, gave me the picture, we blew it up and I'm going to attempt Stonehenge this morning in oil. So bear with me a little bit. It's not flowers and frou-frou women. It's not bunnies, but this is pretty uh, amazing place. And they really don't know what Stonehenge was about. They don't know what, what it was up for. It could have been a fort. It could have been a thing that they used to tell time. They don't know. So it is one of the world's amazing architectural places in the world. And we're gonna attempt to give it a little bit of color this morning. I am gonna be using oil. So I've got a mess here on the table, but I haven't done oil in a while. So you guys bear with me. Um, I've got my palettes ready. I've got some of my uh, cool colors and warm together. We've got our linseed oil and our uh, paint thinner. I just sketched it. I think we're okay on the sketch. I'm looking at it again. It's okay. It's pretty good. I may, I'm gonna make this look a little more tilted with an under, underside shading. So all that'll kind of come together. Since I've gotten it sketched, I'm gonna spray it. That's what we're supposed to do. Let's let this thing dry just a little bit and we'll start with our background first. Okay. There we go. The sky on this is amazing. And like I've said before, a good friend of mine said, a good painting you can tell by the eyes and the skies. And so let's make sure we get this sky good. That'll be first. If I don't finish today, I'm gonna take it to my studio and I'll finish it because I'm gonna give this one to Brandon. He has been wonderful to work with. So we'll see how this rolls. I am gonna get a, mm, let me get a larger brush this size. And guys, I am just so rebellious when it comes to drawing and painting. I don't do what they tell you to. I wish I did, but these are really acrylic paint brushes. But I use them for um, oil too, just because I like the synthetic nylon and it just works good for me. Here is my linseed oil. I'm going to slam this around on my plate. That's kind of how I do that. It just, I can use it as I need to and it's all over the place. And I'm going to blend a background. So I'm using the light blue and white. Now blue will take over if you let it. So you want to be sure to use plenty of white. And my white is messy, so if I have to get into it again today, excuse it, it's all over the place. And I'm gonna try to get a really, it won't be exactly probably like you see here, but we're gonna try to get it close. Let's get this blue background. Yeah, I've cleaned my hands two or three times already just setting up. Oil's kinda messy. Never wear anything you want to use again when you paint with oil because you're gonna ruin it, pretty much. All right. Um, I re-gessoed a canvas this morning that I had uh, just to make it a little smoother to make, to also to get rid of a dog sketch I had on it, but it makes it a little smoother when you re-gesso. Uh, I know you buy your canvas already gessoed, but if you'll do it again, uh, it will really make that gesso a lot smoother. You can also, this is just food for thought, get fine sandpaper and you can sand your um, canvas and that really helps smooth it out. Gets rid of those canvas holes as you're painting. I'm pretty unorthodox when it comes to painting. You ought to see, now my car I have now I don't, but my other car, it was awful. It looked like, it was awful. I had paint and drop claws and ladders and I've cleaned up my act just a little bit, but I am kind of a throw it and get it done kind of artist. I wish I was a little more organized. My sister's very organized, she paints. My mother is very organized with their things, but I am not. I'm like my grandfather. All right, I'm just kind of getting this basic blue on here. I added a little bit of a navy 
to it and I'm going to blend it again. See if we can't get a really thick, rich blue on here. Eyes and skies. Let's make this grand. Betty would be proud. Here we go. I've got it sketched out. I would have done it in front of you, but I was just afraid I'd be erasing most of the time. But actually, it was a little easier than I thought. Don't get discouraged if you have to sketch something two or three times. Yesterday, I did a pet portrait, and I just threw the canvas away. I was had erased so much. Once I got a fresh start, it helped me a whole lot. And I started over, and it worked just fine. And you just can't let, you can't let something just get you down when you're painting. It is just paint. You gotta keep getting back on that bicycle and riding. Here we go, we wanna get inside your little stone hinge. Blocks here. Doesn't matter if you get on it because we're gonna be painting over it anyway. Keep your paper towel right here where you can just kind of dab off all that excess. There we go, smooth that out real good. You don't want to see any start stop. This was a pretty time of day for this picture. I think Brennan took it himself over there. There we go. Give it another swipe or two. Now you've got some irregularities over in here, so I don't want to get that too solid. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start this down here. Let's let this base coat dry some. Now oil, like I've told you before, takes three months for a painting to completely dry that's in oil. Um, I wouldn't frame it. I would hang it on a nail or lean it up against something, sit it on an easel, but it's not going to be dry for a while. So when you paint with oil, you just at least want to give it a little resting time before you continue on. There's a lot of ridges here uh, with the grass here. I'm going to just see what I can do. I'm adding green and black. and th I think what I'll do is give it a base and then highlight it highlight my ridges. I'm using two or three different greens in this painting. Because grass is not just green. It's just not. It's everything. There's a lot of different colors in grass. Got my thinner over here in plastic, which you shouldn't do. You should put it in metal, but I'll ditch it when we get finished. Here we go. Let me give you another little tip while I'm just spreading this out as an underpaint, sort of. Um, when you have a canvas and you're starting a painting, you know, sometimes you can get snow blind by a white canvas. A lot of artists, what they'll do just before they even decide what they're going to paint is get a blue or a gray and just go over the whole piece so that that snow blindness goes away. It's hard to get your colors, and I probably should have done that with this, but really hard to get your colored tones correct when you're just blinded by so much white on a canvas. So a good tip with starting a painting would be to undercoat it with something. Even your gesso, you can tint it if you want to do a second coat of gesso. Tint it with gray or blue to get rid of that glaring white. It really does. It kind of can knock you in the floor. All right, now I am going to add a little black. Black is pretty powerful, but that's all right. You don't want to get so much of the linseed oil or the thinner, whichever you choose to use, on your canvas that you drip. See, we're starting to drip a little bit there. 
That's why you have your paper towel right here. There we go. Believe it or not, we're going to have grass here. I know it looks black. That's what it looks like in the picture. So you paint what you see, if you agree with it or not. Oh yeah, Daddy, that's some black. That's all right. That's what it looks like, and we're gonna highlight it with some green to show a highlight. Actually, it looks like the sun is coming probably this way toward this painting. You see the highlights from the inside of the stones here, and then these little ridges that are on the ground are highlight from the sun coming up or going down. I can't, I don't know which one that is, but it's doing one or the other. we go adding a little yellow okra to that going back into my black there's a lot of black we want to highlight some of those little grassy mounds and I, I'm seeing some little stipples on my canvas that's okay because this is a grassy uh, dirt area and they might add to it now paint the sides of your canvas if you don't want to frame it um, and just hang it like it is. I have several in my home, just not framed, because I kind of like the old rigid sides. I'm weird, I'm telling you. But it looks pretty good hanging in a house. Everything doesn't have to be framed, especially these days. It's kind of cool just to have it hanging. Here we go. Now, as we get up to the top up here in this area, folks, it's black because that's the shadow that you're seeing. All right, I'm gonna add a little more. There we go. Yes. Just kind of layering this on here. Lightens up as we get higher, and then we get into a dark shadow, but this is all pretty dark. And what you do is you do your underneath, like you can see there's underneath, there's black there. Then you're go, you'll go on top with the highlights, but look at what's behind and pull this way when you paint. It's harder to go here down. It's better to go back to front. And you artists probably understand what I'm saying. All right, I'm gonna add a little more. Hang on. I just keep looking at it and it's just dark right here. There's just no getting around it. And I'll tell you this too, I think oil paints have a certain richness about them that an acrylic paint just, just doesn't have. It can look like you bought this you know, at an antique store. It's got some age all by itself. And it's so rich and pretty. I am gonna change brushes real quick. And we're gonna get kind of fine detail up under some of these stones. Uh, once again, my favorite are the little angle brushes like this, the little synthetic angle brushes. And you know, the label says use for watercolor, acrylic, blah, blah, blah. This is a brush I like to use with oil. Doesn't fall apart, it's not too bristly. Works just fine. Now, I'm getting, I am gonna use, there's some green in that black, so I'm gonna add some green to it. Right up under these stones here, it's dark. And it, you definitely see a start-stop line below these. Sometimes I put my finger right where I'm painting so I don't lose track of where I am. There we go. 
And with an angle brush like this stone here has a corner, you can just tilt your brush and there you go. A whole lot easier than using a flat brush. And you can even use the point of these for fine detail. Works wonderful. Half of a good painting are your materials. Uh, yeah, you've got to go spend the money. And oil paints are not cheap. Um, we've got some wonderful places around here that sell good uh, art products. Lots of good places in the Tri-Cities. You're going to spend a little bit of money, but it's an investment. You're putting it in to a good painting, and it'll last a long time. Uh, oils are more expensive than acrylic, but they're worth it. There you go. Now, going back to my other brush, just to get rid of a few of those start stops. All right. Okay. I'm going to get back into my black again and just darken this up one more time. And when I finish up with the stones, we'll deepen that shadow too. We're going to be using these shadows other places. One of these times on the art corner, I'm going to do an old English graveyard. Maybe next time. We were just driving by and I took some pictures. It wasn't anybody famous, just someone over in London. Beautiful graveyard with a wrought iron uh, fence around it and I'd love to do that on one of our London pictures. Okay, let's go ahead and work on the sky just a little more before we start detail on these stones. Hey, let me tell you something too, rocks are hard. They really are, they're hard. When you do mountainous, rocky terrain, you have to kind of get a knack for, for painting rocks. They're not easy. All right, I am going to start with the clouds. Now, all clouds is mis are not white, but white is involved. So I'm going to start with my white. Going to get over here in my yellow okra. Back over in my white again. And turn my little paper towel over. And this cloud is tilted. Let me get a little black on here. This cloud is tilted. Now I'll know in just a minute if I've got the right brush. So I'm going to tilt this cloud just a little bit. Uh, there's not a lot of white to this cloud. It's kind of gray, yellow okra, and a little cream. It's beautiful. And you can see when you're with oil, when you're not allowing it to completely dry, you're going to move your blue around a little bit. That's all right. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change brushes. And I'm going to dry brush some of that. Nothing on it but paint. I'm going to dry brush some of that. There we go. Shows up better and it'll start kind of getting fuzzy, which is what I want. We want this to look realistic. Get into my cream over here. Okay. If you go out and buy oils, I recommend get a large tube of white. It'll last you a long time. You're going to use it with everything you do, but this is what it'll end up looking like if you're not careful. They get real messy. Mine's pathetic, but I'm still squeezing it out at every end. The white's coming out. It's all that matters. I don't want to buy one for a while. So my little monster white's over there waiting on me to use him again. All right, here we go. With this realistic sky, I want to dry off my brush again. There we go. Now I may get right on in this here. We want this to look realistic. I'm going to get 
a little black and I'm going to start doing this. This kind of adds a little bit of fluff to the edge of that cloud like this. It's not white here, it's dark. So I'm very lightly doing this with my brush, just doing a little bit of swirly gigs round and around to get that powdery, leftover looking cloud. Changing brushes again, dry brush. There we go, just needs to be a little smaller. I use my fingers, I'll use paper towels, I'll use whatever it takes to get the look I want. There we go. Now, get back into this a little more, right in here. Dry it off. getting a little closer. This is a smaller canvas, so I have to get a little closer and more involved right on top of it here. Now my sister, when she paints, she stands. And a lot of artists do that. I couldn't stand that long. I like to sit and paint. All right, now watch this. I'm gonna get a little paper towel and I'm gonna fuzz it up with that just a little bit to give it more realism. There we go. help fuzz that cloud up a little bit. Plus it gets rid of some of that excess. Now, this cloud goes behind these stones, so I'm just gonna go right on top of it right here. We'll go back over it in a minute. You've got a really strong blue area right here. Hey, this is a cloud. Look at all the colors in that cloud. It's not white. I am going to add a little cream up here. It's reflecting the sun up here. This would be more serious oil painting than a bunny or a flower. This is where you really have to get in there and work on your realism techniques. There's some more blue here. Now it's, there's, I'm gonna leave that one area. There's some really dark, cloudy stuff here. And it goes behind these stones, so you want to get it behind there. There we go. Haven't practiced this one. I probably should have. Then there are some breaks in the clouds. Oops that blue. There's some breaks in the clouds back here. I want to show those. I'm going to get my pure white back on here. There we go. Some breaks in those clouds and then it looks like I think that's a I don't know, I think it's a sunset. And it goes back here. You can actually see it. Look really close. It's right back here. It goes all the way down to the horizon sunset does. And actually there's a little white. I see the sun. It's right back here. I'm going to put him in. I'm going to put a little bright okra around him. This is the sun. He is back there.
using my tip again just to get that round sun in. Then I'm going to start with a little bit of a blue haze. Just working what's on my brush all the way up. There is a real dark area right here. So I'm getting in my blue and I'm doing a little bit of the black and it's right here, right above the sun. It's a little dark cloud area right there. And you know, these are really minor details, but it's probably one reason Brandon picked this picture was because of the sunset and just the atmosphere around Stonehenge here. So don't ignore everything that it's all about. Let me get back into some cream again. It's had a little time to rest. Now sometimes in art class, the students will have to just leave and come back later to finish their painting because oil does have to rest sometimes. You have to let it dry enough so that you're not taking it off as you're putting it on. But I'm gonna do my best to get it all on today. But another good thing about a oil that I love, and a lot of artists do, is the blending. You can just blend so easily with oil paint. It's got such a wonderful, wonderful blending quality. All right, I'm getting into white and okra right up here. Strong. There is a little bit of white drama in these clouds back here. I want to get some white drama in there. Little teeny bits of white drama. I mean, if it was just the stones about this picture, it'd probably be kind of boring. But the sky is really what kind of makes it. Now. Hey, and folks, this is not easy. Skies are hard, and you need to learn to do them through practice. Hey, and you're not talking to the, have done it all, know it all here. I'm learning like anybody else. There we go. There's a strong blue. It's okay. I'll blend it in. Some more strong blue here. We get some more black. I'm going to dry my brush off like this. I just scrape it around my paper towel. And then I'm going to get some dark right in here. I know I sound like Bob Ross when I really get into it. I don't mean to. But when you start painting, you kind of get into a zone. And it's hard to dialogue sometimes. I'll be painting in my studio and somebody will come up behind me. And I, the other day, I screamed bloody murder. I was just in the zone and they came up and said hi and I swear I screamed bloody murder. It scared that person to death. But I couldn't help it. <laughs> you get into the zone. All right, now. I've got to get that one little area. Don't want any linseed oil. I want it dry right here. I'm just using a very light touch. My hand's all the way back here because if you get way down here, you're going to add too much pressure. So keep your hand way back and it lightens your touch. And I'm going to get these clouds. If it hair lips Santa Claus. I'm just kind of doing a very soft swirly. That is behind these stones. So you have to go behind there, pick up some of this sky. It's 
while you do your background first, you can go right back in and just cover all that up when we start doing the stones. Pop, 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 adding more white. Okay, we'll let that rest just a second. And I'm gonna go up here, there's one big blobby cloud right over here in the corner. Let's get him up here. He's mostly white with a little bit of a highlight and that's a reflection from that sun. See how the oil paint just, it's just so smooth. You really, really, it's almost, it's intoxicating. You start doing oils and it just, you can just keep moving your paint around and changing your mind and it's really neat. There's some yellow ochre over here. There's a little stray right down here. A little stray cloud, some more stray over here coming into the picture. I'm getting to where I have to use readers and develop to an eight by 10 so I can see it. That's okay. You have to be careful developing that large though because sometimes you lose your detail. Uh, a lot of my students will just look at an iPod or an iPad and paint from that, which is good clarity. You know, you just have to keep uh, punching it, but it's good clarity. Okay, now I'm really gonna throw some white on here because that cloud is real strong. So I am doing a, just a big glob of white so it doesn't blend out. I'm gonna leave that for now. Come back over here with some more white. And I know I keep going back and forth, but like I say, I let that oil paint rest just a little bit and then I go back. That way you're not taking it on and putting it off at the same time. Here we go. Letting it rest, let, kind of layering it. There's a strong white highlight there. Clean this brush, get pure white. You can use a palette knife to sort of move your paint around your palette to, to clean your white up, give it a little space all its own, nothing involved with it. Use your palette knife to do that. Okay, now. I'm gonna get in behind these a little bit more. There's some radical dark right here. There's a little radical dark right back here. There's one right back here. Go ahead and get all your background in because once you start your detail on your stones, you don't wanna go back in and do that. Uh, you start getting into a power play with your background and you'll lose some of your detail you worked so hard on. More sky back here. More sky here. And you want it to look realistic. Okay. Now, cleaning this brush again with my thinner and my paper towel, I'm going back into my white and I'm gonna put a few highlights in these clouds you can see through there. Now, okay. I think we might be ready if I'll quit playing 
to start our stones, okay? I am gonna work on this little area right here in just a little bit. I'm gonna let that dry some. All right, now, I think I've got enough color out here to get the stone going. Uh, what we're gonna use, look what a mess. What we're gonna use is black, white, and okra. And believe it or not, there's a little blue in those stones. I'm gonna start with this right here, and it's primarily dark. It's got a little bit of a light gray, but let's go ahead and outline the top of this. It's not gonna be even. This is a stone that is centuries old. So I'm gonna wiggle my brush around to give it some jiggles. I can see my lines because I sprayed it with hairspray. So I can still see my lines, they did not go away. And like I said, this, this kind of a paintbrush has the advantage of having a really sharp tip that you can use to get your lines all squiggled up. There's a dip right there, let me get that in. You don't want it perfect because these, these stones are not perfect. All right. I'm gonna blend a little green. I bet there's a moss on these. I think there is a moss on them actually. And it's probably got a little green these do, they're kind of a gray green. Just about threw it at you. All right, right here. I'm looking at all the detail and I mean, you know, you might think, oh, a stone is boring. I'm gonna tell you, I just challenge you to try to, to, to paint some stones. They're hard, they really are. To make them look realistic. Now let's get this underside very dark. Over here as well, I'm using the tip of my brush, this underside. And I kind of want it to come up like that so it looks like it's tilted just a little bit. There we go. Now this is just pure black underneath. It's just a shadow. And your lights and your darks are called values. And values are what separates the men from the boys in painting. Uh, your real artists are not afraid of whites and blacks. They actually, the darker you go, the more realistic it will look. Now let me get, I've got this one color mixed. It's pretty good for the stones, I think. It does have a little green in it. A little okra. Which is a wonderful decorative color. I'm gonna end up painting my whole bathroom yellow okra. Yeah, that kind of turns it color I want. And then I'll go back on top with some black detail. There we go. This is the kind of painting when you're doing high detail like this that makes you go to bed at 7.30. You think, why am I so tired? It's because you were concentrating so hard <laughs> on your painting earlier in the day. There is a crack right there. I want to get that in. If you don't do the high detail though, it's not gonna look real. You see that one stone, how much time it's taking? Listen, in order to get the lights and the darks and to get everything placed where it needs to be, it takes time, it really does. And 
and this has actually got some stippling. So I'm turning my brush sideways and I'm just patting it like this. Look, just turn it sideways and I'm just sort of patting. So what goes on stays on, goes on kind of rough. It's not a sponge technique, but it gives you a little bit of a, a Venetian look here. Drying it off, and I'm going to use the paint I've got left over. Stipple that on. All right, there we go. Now, okay, I'm going to start with this stone right below it. It's got a little more of a green to it this mossy junk or whatever it is that's growing off these things. And right underneath that archway there on the stone hinge is gonna be really dark. I hope you guys are loving this. All right, now I'm gonna use a little linseed oil. Got some on this palette over here. Sometimes if you do uh, too much thinner, it will make your paint drip, so. Use linseed oil as your blending medium if you can. Now, this one is a little lighter. He's a little green gray. And you know what, really and truly, the canvas holes kind of help this one. Let's get the edge here right up where your background was. This is kind of Fred Flintstone. Who knows, Stonehenge might have been somebody's car. We really don't know. All right, now. There is a little bit of detail in here, but I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna get behind it and start outlining this rock in the background here. There's one behind it. Draw it in with my little edge. He's got a little gap that is completely black. And this little fine brush with the tip helps you be able to get into those fine details back here. Linseed oil. There we go when you start drying up or getting too thick. Is it, there's a tilt there, and then he's dark, dark right back here. He is, there is a shadow, and this is behind the scenes. Dark, dark. Don't know really what this is, but we're gonna put it in anyway. All this is dark. Now, let's get into our light. It's, there is a, ref a glow from this sunset, I think is what it is. So we want to get that yellow glow on this one stone. Here we go. This is a small area back here. This is crazy detail. Smaller area right here. Y'all be sure and tune in for the graveyard painting. And I hope you all are painting at home. I hope this inspires you or at least puts you to sleep for your afternoon nap but I really hope that you're painting at home. I hope this has inspired you to go somewhere, buy you a little starter kit of paint brushes. I recommend starting with acrylic, uh, a little easier cleanup, a little easier to start learning with, and get on your back porch this summer and paint. It's the new read. A lot of people, you know, they, there's a lot of readers out there do it for an escape. This is a wonderful escape as well. And you are fine-tuning 
your eye hand motor skills. It sharpens your brain, you have to pay attention. And who knows, you might end up a famous artist. One of the best artists we have in town started when I think he was 70. He's downtown at uh, one of those art galleries, Ken Simulink. He came and spoke to us at our art class. He's one of the best artists we have in our area. Started really late as something to do for retirement. Fabulous artist. It's never too late. There we go. I'm just copying what I see back here. Don't know what it is. Doesn't matter, it's there. So it's going in my painting. This is some old, old remnant stone in the background back here. I've got a little highlight, another one here. All right, now we're gonna start on our other big one. <coughs> this gray green again is kind of the, the colors of these stones. A little, little okra to it. It's kind of a hard color to mix, but I think we've got it pretty close. It is kind of green. Isn't that weird? I see that green in that gray. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it, lighten that up some. There we go. That way you'll be able to see the crud coming off of it. There we go, I'm getting that solid background, then I'm gonna start adding the detail to it. It's starting to come around just a little bit. It's starting to look like what we're painting. But you see how important that sky was? And I'm still not happy with this. I'm gonna work on this before we leave. But that sky is real important in this painting. And I know that's why Brennan shot it at that time. Because it was beautiful. Now, let's get into some of the cruddy mold that's on this rock. And we'll get into my black a little more and some brown. There's cruddy mold here. And I'm just gonna kinda dab some of this cruddy mold on here. As uh, Bill in my art class would say, dab, dab, and dab. Cruddy mold right in here. Turning my brush sideways again. It's not a big brush because I need that sharp edge. But I'm just patting it to get some stippling on here to make it look a little more like a rock. a line there to divide that from the others and then I'll sort of blend it out. There we go. Turn it sideways. Stipple this in. Now, while I'm, while I'm on a roll, let's turn this one and get some stippling on this side too just a little bit. There's kind of a mess on this side, who knows why? It's just old. But I just love old stuff. It's hard to duplicate it. It's fragile, but I just, I just love the old look. There we go. Now, we got another one that's in the background here. Y'all just have, bear with me. It's right back here. I'm gonna outline him. I'm hooked on this brush. And he's a little darker because he is behind, okay? He's not up front. He's not as big either. 
because he is behind. There's a distinction between him and the one up front with a little dark line. Getting into my gray green, but he is a darker gray green. And this painting is not as big as I usually do in here um, in the art corner. This one is just a little teeny because you know, something like this you would probably want small so that you can put it in an office or somewhere just to remind you of your trip. You wouldn't want something really big. Of course, this might look good big. I don't know. Once again, he is a little darker because he's behind these other fellas, okay? The side of this one is a lot darker. So while I'm into that dark gray, I'm going to go ahead and get this dark side. He's got two different dimensions on this rock. He's not just flat looking at you. He's is sort of tilted. So we're going to make this side darker. Down here, this is dark also. That's grounding. Then I'm going to get into my gray green right here. This rock comes on out to about right there. I think there is a little mold or algae or something that grows on these stones over there and they kind of protect it. So that's probably why we're getting that green hint. This almost touches the other one, but you can see a little bit of that background and I've got to get in there with a toothpick and get that blue line in. All right, th this one has a highlight, and it's not a white highlight, but a yellow okra highlight right here. Then it gets dark again. It's just from the sun coming this way. You're going to see pops of light over here. There's a little dark crevice right in here. Coming along, little dark crevice right here. Then you've got another, I'm gonna get back into this guy in just a second, but while I'm doing these dark sides, I'm gonna go ahead and get this dark side on this one. Linseed oil, yell at me. You'll know when you need it, your brush will start drying out, your paints won't, won't move. Linseed oil helps your paint move. There we go, that goes down, there's a crevice there. The darks and lights are what make your rocks look real, okay? There we go. I love this gray green, it's a pretty cool color. up here. I am going to pop some highlights on these rocks because they are in, they are really close to that sunset and some of that color is just dancing on them. Here we go. And I don't mean to be so intently um, focused, but you have to be on this kind of thing. This is really high detail because it's small and there's a lot going on. And I'm trying to hurry. There we go. Let's clean that brush off. I'm going to get into my dark black and I'm going to do a ridge. It's right there. There's a ridge right here. There is another rock right over here. I'll outline it. Let's see, that ridge goes down this way, this way, and then it kind of cuts off. You know, and I don't understand what it is, but it doesn't matter. It's there, and you need to paint it. There we go. Now, while I've got a little leftover paint, I'm going to start stippling this rock. 
get his mold and crud on him. Sideways brush, and I'm dabbing and dabbing. Got some bigger kind of holes up down in here. So I'm gonna use my sharp point and get those in, okay? There's some definite bigger holes in this one rock, so they have to get on there. Now he comes on over. You don't want him to be mealy mouth looking. Let's get that dark, dark. Very dark here underneath. That's because we've got so much height against that lit up sky that it makes your shadows very dark. And that helps show some dimension and depth. Connect that. This is really dark too. All right, I'm putting my finger here. I'm losing my way. There we go. Now, let's get right up to the edge of this guy, get rid of that white. And like I said, I'm gonna have to use a toothpick to get the blue into that one. Let me see what brush I've got. Let's use this one. And I've got just a little bit of a background. See, you should do it first. I missed that one, but it can't be white. So you have to get a tiny little brush and fill that in with background. Okay, now, same with this. Missed that background. So, you've got to get a tiny little brush and you've got to get your colors right and you've got to get right back in here. I'm gonna use a little bit of leftover. You don't want it to look like the rock because that's not what it is. This is part of the sky. I'm going to add a little more blue to it. There we go. That shows that it's sky. Now, let's go back to my favorite brush. Where are you? This is the one I've been using, I believe. Yes, okay. Going to get yellow ochre. What we're going to do is pop some highlight right here. This is from the uh, Sunset. And you've got some really strong highlights right here. And I hope you're not taking your afternoon nap listening to me. This is a, this is a more intense painting. But I want you to watch me real close. highlight. Don't drip on me. Okay. There's a real strong highlight right here. And another thing, I, I think I've mentioned this before on this show, one good thing to do when you're painting, especially high detail, sit back, I sit back like this a lot just to look or get up walk away and come back. It helps you be able to tweak and fine tune your painting. Now I am switching brushes and going a little smaller because we're getting into some detail here. Steadying my elbow on the table and this rock is indented. It's the last one in this little section. There's a highlight on this on this little booger too. Let's get him high lit. Right up through here. You know, and you, you don't wanna half do it. You wanna spend the time and get this done right. If your name's gonna go on it, do it with all of your heart. Okay, now, there is a strong highlight back here with this little guy. Too much linseed oil, I think. Let's put that highlight in. It's real strong. That's where that sun is setting on that rock back there. Now the one in front of him has got that old dark green gray. Yucky old boy color. 
Here we go. G.I. Joe is what the color I would call it. Gray green. And I'll go ahead and base him. Add a little ochre to it to give it a little bit of a, that's the color it is. And then there's a strong highlight on this side of the rock. I'm gonna let it dry, then I'm gonna pop him with that highlight. Now, if I can drive home after this, we'll be doing good. I used to paint five hours a session when I worked for somebody, but now I do four. You just cannot, oop, you just cannot do super high detail and drive home. There we go. This one's really strong because this one is facing the sun. Glad we did our background in blue right there. You got a little highlight there and a highlight there. We'll go ahead and get that on there. Now let's get into our G.I. Joe color again. This has got a lot of crud on it, this rock. So I want to get that crud on there appropriately. Getting into my black and I'm going to have this mold start here and then pull down. And I think the more drama that we can put on these rocks that, that is there, the more interesting this painting will be. This one has a lot of cruddy junk right in here. Dry brushing some more on here. Cruddy junk. But that's what it looks like. One more dark edge while I'm in the dark stuff over here. Let's start this rock. He's real dark on top. He's turned. I like my sky better all the time because everything in the painting is just kind of monochromatic. It's got a lot of different of the same hues and that blue sky helps it pop so much. Let's get his rock form. And watch me just bounce around all over the place. Let's start Mr. over here. G.I. Joe Green. There's a lot of crud on this rock right here, and he's right up next to this one. So I want to bunt him right up next to that one. Let's get my black. It's real dark down here. Pull it up. See if we can't distinguish. Hey folks, it is what it is. This is what this looks like. I hope you can get an opportunity in your life to go over to Europe and look around. It's beautiful, old, old. And the people, when I went in May, they're so nice. Um, they were so accommodating and kind and knew we were Americans. And I think I was the only Southern accent I heard for seven days, but I sort of drew a crowd. But they were so um, mannerly and very, very nice. They dressed really well too. But this is out like, you know, in England 
we didn't get to see many castles or fields. I was in London, but um, what beautiful, beautiful things they have over there. Castles, countryside. And the reason that this rock is so light, once again, your sun's coming this way. We need to lighten up this one in the middle one more time so it's congruent with the other one right here. He needs a real strong pop of yellow. If I can get that, there we go. I just have too much linseed oil in that little, there we go, right there. Real strong because the sun is here and it's making that reflection pop on these stones that are behind. I don't want to darken them down. I want them to look real. There we go. You see a reflection here. There's just a tiny little bit there. Let's get some more on these rocks, some more highlight, because that's where that sun is. I'm going to completely dry off this brush, get it in my pure white and my okra. Let's see if we can't do a real strong, there we go, real strong highlight on this one. My abs should be so strong from going back and forth like this. You've got to go back and forth. You've got to be able to do that to see what you're doing. Get back far enough away to get some perspective. Now, I've kind of got the basic stuff on here. What I want to do now is sort of let this rest. And I'm going to get into my grass down here and put some highlights on top of that. I'm going to use okra and some white and green and I'm just going to pop some highlights on here and to be honest before I do that let's go over it with another layer of black down here at the bottom just needs it it's rested long enough let's go over it with one more layer of black down here then we'll start popping the highlights on it just easier to do it this way than to do light and dark, light, dark. Let's just do dark and then we'll pop those highlights on it. There we go. Now, let's see if we can't get some little mounds of grass on here. Not sure how I'm going to do it. Let's do it like this. Just sort of turning my brush at an angle. Sometimes you just have to kind of work the mechanics and just see what's gonna make it look like it's supposed to. This little brush, I'm just gonna kinda turn it over on its side. And just these close-up mounds you're gonna see more vividly, and they sort of fade as they go back into the picture. I want it to look like grass, so I'm going to kind of muster up some up and down. Here we go, like this. And actually what I'm doing is taking the paint off that I just put on, but I think it might work just to show that highlight. And I'll pop some green and okra in there. But just up front is where you're going to see a lot of that high detail. As it goes back into the painting, you're not going to see all the blades of grass because it goes further away. But up here you do. And it's kind of a rough terrain. But it's, it's reflecting that sunset. It's showing that those sparkles off that sun on this grass. I'm trying not to hurry. Just kind of going and getting some of this irregular grass in the front here. I want it to look realistic so it's not going to be perfect. And 
And as you get back up into the picture, they get more vague further away and they kind of blend together a little bit more up in here. And actually those little canvas jars in this actually help this make it look more like rough terrain. Real strong up front and then further away they go away more. Okay, now I'm going to add a little more black to separate the men from the boys in this painting to show the real strong depth around these rocks. Get rid of my extra little canvas holes that I might have. There is a strong dark shadow around some of these rocks. And there's also a little teeny patch of land way back here. Let's just do it green. It's off in the distance. Almost forgot it. There we go. And once again, let's just get the real strong around the base of these. This is a little darker. I'm just fine tuning at this point. This is darker. This is darker. You'd be amazed at what a line or two will do in a painting, just a line or two. Once again, this is Stonehenge over in England. If you're just tuning in, if you're thinking, what in the world is she painting? It's dark here. Fine tuning will make your painting, it really does. Just a few of those extra. There's an area here I sort of let slide. Let's get that in, it's dark. Now Brennan, when you take this home, lean it up against a wall or hang it on a nail, so it's gonna be wet. I've got a lot of paint on this. There we go. Dark, dark right here. Abs of steel going back and forth. Okay. And there's a few little tweaks that can probably be done to this, but I think we're pretty much close enough to see what it is. We've got our high, oh yeah, I was gonna work on that sky. Let me do that just a minute before we quit. Let me get up here, all right. It will not defeat me. I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna work on this little sky. Get some of this little um, brush away. I wasn't happy with it. Just needs to look like leftover. Ah, too dark. Hang on. Use my dry brush again. Get back up here. And best way I, I know to do leftover is just swirl, swirl your brush around in a little circle like this. Just swirl it, swirl it. And it kind of gives you some little leftover cloud remnant there. Dab some more here. Yeah. Okay. I think we're close enough for rock and roll right here. 
Thank you so much for joining us today at the Art Corner, Stonehenge in England. Um, hope you enjoyed today. Keep creating.